very bad place. We've got to get this act in order. We have to get this country going, or we're going to have a serious problem. Not recession. Not recession. Recession's a nice word. We're going to have a much bigger problem than recession. We'll have a depression. Former President Trump came forward during a rally last week to warn that America's economy is going down the drain and is set to face a much bigger disaster than a typical downturn over the next couple of months. His forecasts came shortly before new official numbers showed that U.S. economic growth is declining for the second consecutive quarter, while consumer prices reached the highest level in a generation, and Americans' purchasing power continues to shrink. At this point, there's no way to avoid another economic slump, and what is coming next is going to be even more devastating than most people expect, experts say. In this video, we share Trump's ominous warnings about the future of the United States and some hard pieces of evidence that indicate his predictions might be right. Before moving on, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the most important news. Where we're going now could be a very bad place. Former President Donald Trump stressed at a rally in Arizona last week. He emphasized that millions of Americans are seeing their real wages collapse as inflation continues to rise and eat a bigger share of workers' buying power. At the same time, worsening labor conditions have resulted in a historically depressed labor force participation rate. And the administration's current push for a Green New Deal is only going to accelerate our economic slump, given that the nation's critical energy supplies are dwindling. We gotta get this act in order. We have to get this country going. Are we going to have a serious problem? He alerted. In his view, calling the next downturn a recession is not enough to describe the difficulties we're all going to face. Considering that virtually every sector of the economy is being hit by one disruption after the other. Trump argues that an economic depression that will rival the Great Depression of the 1930s is ahead. And a few days after his speech, new official numbers were released, and they indicate that his forecasts might be spot on. On Friday, the Bureau of Economic Analysis released data showing that real U.S. GDP fell by an annualized 0.9% in the second quarter after contracting 1.6% in the first quarter. Two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth are a common definition for a recession, although recessions in the United States are officially declared by a committee of economists at the National Bureau of Economic Research, using a broader definition than the two-quarter rule as explained by Tom Ozimek in a new article for The Epoch Times. <laughs> However, Vance Jin, the chief economist at the Texas Public Policy Foundation, told during an interview with the paper that, while officially it's National Bureau of Economic Research that calls recessions, the two-quarter rule is usually how it's done by a rule of thumb. I think this is definitely recession that we're in now from these bad policies. Jin continues, blaming a series of irresponsible policies enacted by the White House and the federal government over the past couple of years. Uh, while we are waiting for them to decide whether we are in a recession or not, let's just call it a banana. Global investment strategist Ed Yardini wrote, The Biden administration is arguing that positive employment statistics negate the two quarters of negative growth. So, the dating committee of the National Bureau of Economic Research probably won't make an official ruling about whether the U.S. is in recession for several months, he noted. Yet, regardless of what the committee decides, the truth is that the U.S. economy is rapidly falling apart and real personal income is shrinking more and more with each passing month. No wonder why so many experts believe things will get far worse as we move towards the end of the year. In his remarks, the former president also criticized the current government's handling of the economy, blaming the Democrat-controlled White House for soaring inflation and growing economic imbalances. Biden created the worst inflation in 47 years. We're at 9.1 percent, but the actual number is much, much higher than that, Trump emphasized. 
Even though he didn't share his own estimate for the true rate of inflation at the rally, an alternative CPI inflation measure developed by economist John Williams calculated according to the same methodology used by the US government in the 1980s indicates that the real rate of inflation right now is 17.3%, a 75-year high. Trump also highlighted that persistently high inflation, combined with a major economic slowdown, has put the country on the verge of a devastating stagflationary downturn, which is defined by the combination of accelerating prices and slowing economic growth. Real wages are collapsing and we're on the verge of a devastating downturn. It's called stagflation. Look it up. It's not good. Trump continued. What I'm concerned about is that they keep talking about having some reversals. This could push us to a very bad place. Inflation is going higher and higher all the time, he added, outlining that it's costing families nearly $6,000 a year, bigger than any tax increase ever proposed other than the tax increase that they want to propose right now. In Trump's first full month in office in February 2017, the headline Consumer Price Index CPI inflation measure was at a timid 2.8% in annual terms. The highest inflation reading during his entire mandate was 2.9% in July 2018, and during his final month in office in January 2021, inflation clocked in at 1.4%. Since then, consumer prices shot up by almost 8% in nearly two years, and inflation levels continue to climb higher and higher, reaching figures not seen in more than 40 years. On top of all that, skyrocketing energy prices are making the situation much more complicated. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, soaring energy prices accounted for around half of the headline inflation figure. In his critical analysis of the federal government's policies, Trump singled out what he called Biden's war on American energy and said that the president is responsible for the unprecedented rise in gasoline prices. Since taking office, the Biden administration has taken a number of executive actions targeting the oil industry, including rescinding the Keystone XL pipeline permit, suspending new oil and gas drilling leases on federal lands and waters, and ending fossil fuel subsidies. The actions led the national price of a gallon of gasoline to shoot up over 100% from 2019 levels as the country faces a lack of refining capacity and the world grapples with the consequences of the Ukraine crisis. In a failed attempt to lower prices at the pump, the administration ordered the release of oil reserves from the National Strategic Reserve, effectively putting the nation's energy supplies at risk as inventories get tighter and tighter. Trump argued that these decisions left the United States in a very vulnerable position. Now we're literally begging other countries to pump more oil instead of trying to ramp up domestic production. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country in the world. We are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal, yet everyone knows that the Green New Deal will lead to our destruction, he said. Just two years ago, we were energy independent. We were even energy dominant. The United States is now a beggar for energy. The shortage of energy supplies is already slowing down manufacturing activity and contributing to the deterioration of the country's economic conditions. The term recession can be described as a broad-based weakness in the economy, and that's exactly what we're witnessing right now. Of course, Trump is not the only one who has recently warned about an impending depression in the US. Rich Dad, Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki has repeatedly warned about an economic depression in the country, noting that stock bond and the real estate markets are crashing simultaneously. Last week, he predicted that inflation may lead to a greater depression. Even a top economic advisor to former President Barack Obama admitted that avoiding a recession at this point is unlikely. Larry Summers predicted that the odds are probably better than half that a recession would begin next year, although it could start much sooner. He also noted that Biden's administration is pursuing the least responsible fiscal macroeconomic policy we've had for the last 40 years. We're seeing an episode that I think differs both quantitatively and qualitatively from anything since Paul Volcker's days at the Fed, and it stands to reason that would lead to significant changes in expectations. He said, Adding that preventing a recession with the inflation rate remaining well above 4% 
The rate was 9.1% at the end of June, and the unemployment rate under 4% would be a feat that had never happened in the United States going back 60. 70 years. Similarly, the chief global strategist at Euro-Pacific Capital, Peter Schiff, recently forecasted that America's recession would deepen in the third quarter. The expert explains that the only way to fix America's long-term fiscal problems is for Congress to start running balanced budgets, but neither Republicans nor Democrats have a plan to accomplish that task. The nation will probably suffer through a period of economic stagnation until it burns through the stimulus money. In a recent article published by the Trumpet. News analyst Andrew Miller cited an op-ed written by the late Herbert W. Armstrong written over 46 years ago about the threat of stagflation in America. The article titled, What's Happening to the U.S. Standard of Living and Why? addressed many of the country's economic woes during the Jimmy Carter administration. Back then, his warnings were largely ignored, and most people forgot about it once the Reagan administration temporarily stabilized the economy. Yet, as Miller highlights, the article pointed out the root causes behind America's economic decline. Mr. Armstrong explained that God blessed America with the highest per capita income on the planet because of a promise he made to Abraham. He also warned that God would take away America's blessings if it rebelled. What have we done with these multitudes of national and individual blessings, which actually were the gift of the living God? Mr. Armstrong asked. God did not promise to continue the blessings if we rebelled. We have been rebellious and unwilling to yield to our God and his ways, which would have guaranteed lasting peace and prosperity. We have become arrogant and selfish. We have polluted the fertile lands the living God gave us. We have polluted the air, the rivers, lakes, and oceans. We have polluted our own minds and those of our children. We have given public acceptance to the misnamed new morality, which is gross immorality. We have started on a course of destroying the home and family relationship, the foundation of any stable society. We have filled our lands with corruption. He wrote, most of the sins Mr. Armstrong cited are even more present in our society today than 46 years ago. But still, most leaders in America think they can solve all of our problems by spending more and more money. Despite knowing that these policies create economic imbalances that affect the lives of millions upon millions of U.S. households, it's safe to say that their attempts to curb inflation by rising interest rates will only make things worse. Our money is gradually becoming worthless paper, and the decaying living standards of our country will destroy our republic and plunge us into an economic depression unlike anything we've ever experienced in our lifetime. The moment of truth has arrived now more than ever. It's time to wake up.